how can the four carbon hydrogen bonds in methane be the same? Because when you look at the electron configuration, this does not explain the type of bonding that we actually see in methane. It appears from this configuration that the carbon has only two electrons to share covalently, these here. Because these electrons and these electrons are paired up in a nice full orbital and they don't want to disrupt the system, they're quite happily paired up and very stable. Well, what actually is the case? How do we get this molecule methane that has these four bonds that are all identical? They're all 110 picometers in length and they all have a bond strength of 438 kilojoules per mole. What is actually happening here? What type of orbitals are overlapping to give these bonds? This only comes about when you have the hybridization of methane's 2s and its three 2p orbitals to form four completely new and four completely equal orbitals. So this is called sp3 hybridization and it's a quantum mechanical description of the types of orbitals that are present on a carbon atom when it forms these four bonds when it's in an sp3 state. An s orbital and these three orbitals here mix together to give four completely new orbitals that are degenerate, they're all at the same energy level, they all have the same shape and size and what the sp3 stands for is it's telling us what type of orbitals have gone into making these four new orbitals. So one s orbital, so this s here is saying this s orbital and then the three p orbitals, these three p orbitals have all mixed together to form these four new orbitals and that is the situation we have in a carbon atom with four single bonds. So just to see what they look like we have the s orbital and the three dumbbell shaped p orbitals here they all mix together and give four of these asymmetric dumbbells. So you have a large lobe here and a small lobe here. So each of these has in some part the characteristics of the original orbitals that went to, to make them. So we have this dumbbell shaped characteristic of a p orbital and this larger lobe contains the spherical s orbital character that we see from the original orbital here. And then when you have these four hybrid orbitals, they arrange themselves in a tetrahedral orientation. These orbitals are going to want to arrange themselves around the carbon nucleus so that they're as far apart from each other as they can possibly be because electrons repel electrons. And the way that's done is to have these orbitals all pointing in tetrahedral geometry which these bonds will have an angle between them of 109.6 degrees. So overall, a tetrahedral shape is a trigonal-based pyramid. So we use methane as a model compound. We can explain how carbon is able to form four identical bonds using sp3 hybridization. So we need to explain how we get a double bond in a molecule and how the orbitals that are involved in this type of bonding give a trigonal planar geometry and 120 degree bond angle. And we're just simply building on the sp3 hybridization theory and taking it a step further. So how do we get this carbon-carbon double bond? And the answer is that each of these carbons is sp2 hybridized. And we need to think about what that means. The clue is in the name. So with sp2, what we've got is one s orbital mixing with two p orbitals here to give just three more hybrid orbitals. So if we start from our ground state and then show this process we can see that of the original orbitals this s orbital has mixed with these two p orbitals to give three new hybrid orbitals and importantly one of the p orbitals is left unchanged. So if we look at what that actually looks like when we draw the orbitals shown here in pink are the hybrid orbitals and you can see that they've got this trigonal plane of shape to them and then this all important unchanged p orbital shown in blue here sits above and below the plane of these three hybrid orbitals and we can then go on to see uh, how these are involved in bonding the hybrid orbitals shown in pink here these two lobes will overlap to give a central sigma bond and when this happens it brings the two p orbitals close enough together that you get a sideways overlap of these orbitals and this is what the second bond in a double bond is. So now we're moving on to the final type of bond that you need to be aware of and that's triple bonds as shown here. So our model molecule here is ethine and again we need to work out how we can get <coughs> this type of bond in a molecule. Uh, and a triple bond has a linear geometry so 180 degree bond angle and this type of bonding arises when you have sp hybridization hybridize an s orbital and a p orbital so we we generate 
two new hybrid orbitals from the mixing of this orbital with this one and then we leave these two p orbitals unchanged. It's these two orbitals that are key to this type of bonding. So if we look at what an sp hybridized carbon atom looks like, again shown in pink is the two hybrid orbitals that's these here and they're pointing in this linear orientation. They're as far apart from each other as they can be so they have a 180 degree angle between the two of them. In blue is one of the unchanged p orbitals and in green is the other unchanged p orbital. When two of these sp hybridized carbon atoms come together you get a sigma bond and then two sets of p orbitals are brought close enough together to give this sideways overlap so you have an extra two bonds as opposed to an extra one bond. These are still pi electrons and as such they behave in a very similar manner to the pi electrons in a double bond.